In our news bulletin for this evening, recent deaths on the island raised questions into the status of the morgue at the Nuevo Hospital. Government is reviewing the four-day work week and implementing a new pay scale for professional and technical staff. A man was jailed overnight over an incident where property was damaged. The women's cricket season gets off to a slow start with some villages out of the competition and a clash with netball that could see the season drag on. Two recent deaths on the island has raised questions regarding the status of the Niue Morgue at the Niue Fall Hospital. According to Radio New Zealand, Niue's Minister of Health Pokotoa Sipili confirmed that the island's morgue was out of action and the funerals for people who die on the island needed to be held within 24 hours. In the weekend, a woman passed away and was buried the following day and on Monday evening, a tourist died and was flown back to New Zealand. It has been months since the morgue has been down, although senior health officials have played down the seriousness of the situation, commenting that the morgue could still be used. But according to the minister, that was not the case. Newer Health have not been forthcoming to reveal what is being done to get the morgue up to standard or when the island can expect the problem to be resolved. Health officials have been instructed to make no further comments to the media. Although the Minister of Health, Boto Sipili, has been briefed on the situation, he was unavailable to comment despite making comments to overseas media. The government is reviewing whether to continue the four-day work week for public servants. In mid-January, the four-day week proposal was endorsed by Cabinet and implemented, with most public servants taking a compulsory day off on Friday. This excluded those in the education sector and those working at the airport. The controversial four-day work week and getting paid for five days concept was an extraordinary measure taken to allow public servants time to work with their community commitments. In a briefing with heads of departments, the issue was raised to see whether public servants would like to continue with this arrangement. The move has received mixed reactions from the public and private sector, but government's employing body, the new Public Service Commission, has been monitoring the progress to report back whether it has been a success. The Public Service Commission has reported it in, in its first monitoring uh, request to the departments. Most of the departments, uh, except three, I think, are happy to continue. Uh, we're still going to find out the reasons why the other departments and things. I also talked to the private sector to find out their views about the four-day week, and they will be reporting back on this. I, I want somebody to do some of the analysis, and we might give the analysis to the private sector to figure out. But some of the information we're getting from the private sector at the present moment clearly indicates the fact that Friday is, is now no longer the day that people rush around and do their shopping. But one of the things we'd like to know is that is the turnovers over the week dropping? And if it is, we want to know why, because everybody's receiving the same pay. And we believe that, in fact, you're not going to stop to eat, you're not going to stop eating, you're not going to stop buying. It's just that you're buying at different times of the week rather than rush around on Friday. It was expected that with better planning and use of resources, the efficiency of the public service would improve and benefits maximised by reducing days of work. The report will also take into account whether the public service productivity has been affected. The four-day week trial period was due to end on the 4th of July, but that will all be determined by when government makes a final decision whether to continue or return to the normal work week. Government has also been considering a new remuneration scale for public servants in the professional and technical fields. We're still working on finalising the, the list and we're still working on finalising the pays. Um, we're still going to implement it on the 1st of uh, July. Whether we start paying people on the 1st of July is at the present moment subject to us finalising the, the list and, and pay scale. Uh, but everybody, whatever happens, will be paid as from the 1st of July. These have been part of changes by government to ensure efficiency and productivity of the public service. And Premier Talangi says that the transformation process is moving forward with the successful appointment of Director Generals for some of the government ministries, as well as the delegation of ministers to these ministries. The next step forward for government will be to look at the national budget that will also reflect some of these changes. 
An incident in Alufi South earlier this week resulted in a man being placed in jail overnight. The details into the case involved the destruction of a parked vehicle at Amano. A police spokesperson confirmed that the person was placed in custody for his own safety and was released the following day on the grounds that he commit no further offences. New police have indicated they will not be laying charges, but they will continue to monitor the situation. The women's cricket season got off to a rather slow start with only two games held last weekend. There has been some confusion over the season with an initial announcement made by the National Kirikiki Federation that there would be no women's competition for this year. That decision was later overruled by the Women's Kirikiki Committee a few weeks ago. In addition, the Committee for the Women's Cricket have also decided to make one change to the rules that will see the English cricket bats prohibited and only traditional Nguyen style bats will be used. Women's Kirikiki President Pokina Kofisi says there are nine teams confirmed to play the season with two teams bowing out of the competition, that being Tonga and Hikutui. An apparent clash with the netball season has not deterred or phased the committee and team leaders who were adamant that the season go ahead. For some teams, it has added some strain to their ability to perform as they juggle both netball and cricket at the same time. But last Saturday's games saw Alofi and Vaya play their game with Alofi batting first, finishing up with 307 runs. Vaya then went on to gain 48 runs, giving Alofi the first win for the season. As for the other game between Liku and La Kappa, Liku were up to bat first, but that game had to be stopped due to an unexpected passing of a village out from La Kappa. The committee will determine whether these teams will need to play again or not. The next lot of cricket games will be played on the 14th of June, and the committee are hoping the season will wrap up in July if all goes according to plan. And that is our news bulletin for this evening. We do hope that you can join us next week, but don't forget to check out the Rally of the Rock on Monday as well as the Uluvehi Marine Day. May you all have an enjoyable weekend.